Hi everybody, this is Anne. In our videos, our usual format is to demonstrate just the highlights of multiple pottery techniques. This time, we're changing up the format a little to take you through the entire journey from start to finish of a fun project we're calling the Ruffled Rim Vase. I started this project with two pounds of clay. It was a bit stiff, so I wedged it to soften the clay and get the air bubbles out. I then slammed it onto the center of the bat. I started out fine, coning the clay up and down, and then I hollowed it out. Then I began pulling up the walls. But the taller it became, I forgot to narrow the rim of the vase inward. I realized my mistake and tried to collar it in, but I lost control of it, so I just collapsed it all and I had to start again. This time, I widened out the bottom a bit more, so I had room to narrow the rim as I pulled up the walls. I hollowed out the inside using my palm, and I compressed the floor. This time when I pulled the walls up, I remembered to push the rim inward. I made several pulls to get the height, and because the rim is narrowed at the top, I had much better control so it didn't get unruly. There are a lot of challenges when throwing tall. I have a video that addresses these issues, and if you'd like to learn more, check out the link above. Well, that's much better. Okay. Now when I got the height, I could easily shape the vase by using first my wooden rib to stretch the walls outward. I made several passes with the wooden rib, each time stretching it out a little more. Then I used my red rib to smooth the clay on the inside of the vase. I used my trim tool to trim away the excess clay along the bottom. I then used my red rib to make a first pass of smoothing the clay along the outside of the vase. Since I want a really smooth surface to paint on, I switch to the metal rib which almost burnishes the surface. I then used my fingers along the rim to give it a bit of a lip to prepare it for the ruffle. With my needle tool, I cut away the uneven top part of the rim and removed it. Using just my fingers, I rounded off the very top edge of the rim. Finally, I cleaned up the foot of the pot. I then used a long spatula to remove the excess water from the floor of the vase to avoid cracking. And here's the finished vase. It's 8 inches tall and it has a good weight to it. I put plastic over it overnight and let it dry a little. The next day, when the clay had begun to stiffen up, I wet my fingers and ran them around the rim to soften it back up. With my needle tool, I scored the top of the vase. I then put a little water onto the scored area with a sponge. I rolled out a quarter inch slab of my porcelain clay big enough to overhang the entire top of the vase. I centered it over the hole. I pressed the clay downward on top of the vase rim and compressed it with my fingers like this. I made sure to push down on either side of the rim to make sure of a good adherence. Okay. 
Using my needle tool, I cut the excess clay about a half inch away from the outer part of the vase rim and removed it. I cleaned up the edge of the slab and beveled it inward a little bit along the bottom. I then used my finger to pull that lip away from the body of the vase a little bit to prepare it for the ruffle. Next I cut away the inner excess clay. I was hoping to cut it not quite all the way through so I could remove it before it fell into the pot. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to fall in there. Whack. There it is. <laughs> Using my fingers, I cleaned up the inner edge and compressed it along the inner wall for a good attachment. To make the ruffles, I pushed the first side downward, then pushed the edges of that upward. I did this at the north, south, east, and west points first. I repeated this again in between the first four ruffles for a total of eight. Here I'm using my fingers to maintain the previously made ruffles as I create the new ones. I kept going around the vase defining the ruffles until I was satisfied that they were well spaced and even in height. I then cleaned up my finger marks. And here's the final vase. I finished it by wiring it off the bat and putting it on the shelf. Because of the extra clay at the top and the height, I covered it with plastic so it will dry slowly, thus minimizing the stress and decreasing the chances of it cracking. Here's one I made previously where I decided to paint seabirds with ruffled feathers. I thought the ruffles also complemented the hibiscus and the morning glory flowers, not to mention the ripples in the water. I bisque fired the vase, then glazed and fired it to cone 5. And here's the final result. I hope my adventure has given you some insight about how you might incorporate a unique way to complement your pottery forms. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. I'd like to thank the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. See you next time in the studio!